we'll start the meeting then. Okay. So uh, Ann and I met and we kind of went over some things and I had a whole list of things and I can't find the bloody paper. Uh, but um, I've made several phone calls, and one of the things that was brought to the select board, what, or the safety committee rather, was quality of air from the California wildfires. Yes, I brought that to their attention. I oh, you did? That, yeah. Oh, that's right, it was you. <laughs> um, could you, if you ever have anything like that again, would you also include me in your email? I would be so happy Thank to. Thank you, I appreciate yes. that. So, um, so I did speak to uh, Emily at the Senior Center in Randolph. They did not really officially do anything last year, although they had permission to. You know, the town did grant them permission to go ahead and say uh, that they were opening for uh, smoke conditions. Um, she's willing to, you know, do that again this year. Um, and I'm going to meet with her on Monday to go over some details with her. Uh, we would have to help man it, yeah. um, you know, because they're only open technically until two o'clock. Uh, so especially weekends and extended hours, then we, you know, we're just looking at the the heavy hours of the day when it's the warmest and when the smoke is the thickest. Hmm. So she did ask. She did ask about uh, what would be the triggering factor, like how how would we know that we should. So the triggering factor mm -hmm. on anything like that would come from the state EOC. Okay. Um, DO, D EO, EOC emergency okay. operations yeah. center. Um, so how that works in any. Any situation is if the state feels that there's there's an issue with something, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, bad weather, smoke, is they open up their EOC, they alert all the citizens mm -hmm. as best as can that they're opening their EOC. They alert the uh, emergency manager directors that they are open. They send out a mass email, mm -hmm. and then at that point, depends on what area you are in Vermont that they're opening, you might open your EOC up for your town. Um, and usually they'll start the opening of their EOC and then a state of emergency will come out and now everybody's alerted that there's, that there's an issue. Mm -hmm. Now it falls under the FEMA aspect. But does FEMA actually initiate for conditions FEMA, like FEMA that? FEMA doesn't, me. Sorry. doesn't initiate that thing on on a state to state level, mm -hmm. the state issues that, right. and then because the emergency FEMA is the federal emergency management, right? Vermont emergency management, Brookfield emergency management, Braintree emergency management, and so forth. Okay. Um, so at that point, you know, state of emergency has come out, EOCs are opening, and then the director would make the decision, yeah, we should probably open something up, or the fire chief, or the select board. Did they open anything last year? No. So interesting, yeah. No. The, the quality of air wasn't, it was not good, but it wasn't a bad situation. Most mm -hmm. people hunker in kind of thing in their own, own home. People that, that have breathing problems mm -hmm. that are on respirators or, or whatever is, is their, their problems usually have a plan already in place mm -hmm. for themselves. Mm -hmm. What about people with small children and babies? That's a big issue. That, again, you usually... You usually hunker in and, and you mm -hmm. stay in your own home or in your air conditioner. Um, now, if somebody doesn't have those things... Yeah, they might go to a shelter, but most people won't go to a shelter for that. Yeah, yeah. And I think Emily, yeah. on the times that she did open um, a cooling center, it she really didn't get anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, that's interesting. I think part of it probably is people don't know what about what they should do in the situations right. like that. And I think that's, Amy, why I sent it to the Public Safety Committee, mm -hmm. because I felt, not because... I thought about it a lot, but because they felt like maybe what they, because they could do in their things that they post on Front Porch Forum is just like guidelines when, 
we get into orange. Mm -hmm. Guidelines when we get into red. Yeah. But um, they won't have, they won't um, recommend any type of air air purifiers because that's, that's a liability. Fine. Right. That's fine. They and they, I, they can just say close your windows and get an air purifier. I mean, yeah. a lot of people don't don't even think of protecting themselves. And I, you know, mm -hmm. like maybe we got through last summer. Right. Now, with, with uh, air, I don't air know purifiers and, and all that other stuff, I don't even, as, as a contractor, I don't recommend any brand mm -hmm. uh, because that's a liability. Yeah, sure. Yeah. What I, what I, if you came to me and I was doing something at your house or whatever and you said, you know, the air quality is terrible in my house, well, you should call somebody that deals with that mm -hmm. in to test your home and, and find out where your holes are. Mm -hmm. um, and then if we got into the air purifiers, I would tell you, well, I would check the consumer reports. How many dollars do you want to spend on it? Mm -hmm. Check the consumer reports. So if you can only spend $50, this one might be the best one for you because mm -hmm. that's $49. Mm -hmm. Or you can spend $300, well, mm -hmm. maybe that one would be better for you. Yeah, and you know, and that's what I tell them. I never right. recommend it for them. Right. And people with heat pumps may or may not know there's a setting for just air circulation right. that does not bring in the you know air from the outside. It's just I think it's just public information. I think a lot of I think it caught everyone by surprise last year when it was um, when it happened and when it was so kind of prolonged and intense. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I am one of those people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I just I hunkered in. You know, I ran my air conditioner, and you just, you don't, you limit your exposure to outdoor air. Right. And then yeah. But during, yeah. during that mm -hmm. incident, I had called near, near the tail end of it, called um, the hospital up here, and I said, you know, Joe Blow from Idaho, you know, and I'm just curious, <laughs> did you have a high spike in respiratory problems mm -hmm. coming into the hospital? And they did rise, mm -hmm. but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. An alarming, yeah. Because then they would have got a hold of the CDC. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So now my other question is, um, most like you would have said, most people don't really acknowledge a health condition like that yeah. and air quality. <coughs> so really, would they ever op like would they ever initiate a state thing? It's not really an emergency for everybody. It could be. It could be a, a thing. I mean, that's something I can find out. Yeah, that would be good to know because to, to me, if Noah's, because Noah's the one who usually issues the warnings. Right. So if they're issuing high alerts, you know, without doing a whole big ordeal, right. could we still do something? And then once again, that's why I think the Public Safety Committee has the uh, opportunity to just put out information that's just not emergency. Oh, they're going to. But just sort of best practices yeah. if this happens. Again. Like, where do you, what website gives you the best air quality? You know, you know, air.gov or purple. What is that one? Purple. Air purple. Anyway, there are places where you can just find out what is the air quality in Brookfield right now. And if it's in the orange, you're probably going to want to, especially if you have little kids. Or elderly parents, you're going to want to just do what you're saying. You want to close up, but you've got to figure, you do have to figure out how to circulate air. I think that's one of the things that we ran into that was so clear to me, which was we had, we had little kids in, in the house next to me. After about 24 hours <laughs> of no air and just sort of circulating dead air, it gets really nasty. And um, so there's just, you know, what, what else can yeah. you do besides just like well, turn the fans on? That's um, that kind of what the air, air we do. Is. Like we have, we only have a small unit, a uh, window unit, and that helps our entire house. Yeah. Um, not the upstairs, but um, the entire downstairs. Yeah. And um, because it's an old farmhouse, it's a little drafty oh, yeah. too. <laughs> anyway, that's that's. But yeah, that, that's gonna from. that's gonna be uh, residents, parents, etc. Mm -hmm. By their discretion. Yeah, on, sure. on looking yeah. out. So not really looking out uh, to themselves. That's really not a, an emergency an management emergency, situation right. or a shelter right. situation. The only time it's emergency management and then turns into the shelter is if the state yeah. says, hey, we've got an issue. And then at that point, we start taking action. Yeah. Okay. Who, do, who do they use for air quality checks? Is it NOAA? 
Yeah, no way. Air.gov is a really good place. And also that purple one, which I'll give you, the, is the one that's recommended mm -hmm. from. But it's usually mm -hmm. NOAA that actually issues oh, any type okay. of alerts. We got, there were Vermont, the Vermont alert things came out last, last year on those, BT. on the air. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, going, now, going off a little bit on the VT alert. Um, so you have the ability to just send something to Brookfield. I mean, about Brookfield, right? Every, every EMD and, and select board has the ability to go on um, call the watch officer mm -hmm. and obviously identify who you are and what message you want sent out. Now that only goes on to the hard lines if you're uh -huh. not signed up. And then if you are signed up, then it goes on your hard line plus your cell phone. Now okay. in the federal aspect or statewide, like an Amber Alert or whatever, mm -hmm. we've, we've all gotten the tests yeah, mm -hmm. on our phone. And that one from the school is and terrific. That, yeah. And you know what? That's I'm great. not getting them. And yeah, I'm signed up for everything. Oh, I have yes. to call them. Yeah. Because there's definitely, I used to get them. Jack's phone goes off all the time. Yeah. And well, you got to check your settings then. Your settings are fine. Yeah, I did. No, I did check them. So I have to find out what's going on. You said the school, were you talking about with the kids? Yeah. yeah you know the only thing I found bad about that? What? When they found the kids, they don't send you a notice. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Oh, I think I did we get didn't one. We didn't get a notice really? on there. None okay. of us. Oh, no, we did. None of us that I had cell phones get. No, I got I got one thirty something minutes um, after. Yeah, I got one too. So I, I, I whatever time it was, I got the alert that the kids were missing. Right. And I, twenty thirty minutes, I got the alert saying, "Hey, they've been found." found. Yeah, no, we never got that. My wife didn't get it. Our neighbors didn't get it. So no. you th were worried that they're still wandering around out there. All right. Is there a so, difference between cell carriers, the the cell provider? Is it Who do you have? Oh, that? yeah, we got Verizon, so I... Yeah. So did we. You so should, have, so you I got should it, get so. your stuff on email as well. I have the set for both, for my phone and mm -hmm. Yeah, I do too. I think my wife does on her, so I think she does the email. I don't do any of this stuff. I, yeah. If I, I would do a paper and pencil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> you. <laughs> I don't have a flagpole. So, um, but, no. So you're recommending... So we thought it would work. That is strange. They did send it out. Yeah, I, I got the one saying they were found. I didn't get the one saying they were missing. Oh. <laughs> you got the, oh. <laughs> you got the good one. Right. So what I, happens if you're not in the service area and that alert goes out? I mean, do you, you still get it when you get back into the service if it, area? If it's the test one that they sent out a year, year ago, ago. Maybe? Yeah, it was a year ago. Everybody's ago. phone went off. Yep. Even, even my oh, phone. Oh, yeah, that one. My, even my phone that isn't even hitched up. I just use it for the Rick um, Facebook page. And that's all I use it for. And that was going off. So I had three phones going off. And I was yeah. in a conference and everybody's phone. Everybody's phones went off, yeah. <laughs> that's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it depends on who, I guess, issues it. The feds or the state. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder why I didn't get it. I don't know. Did you check afterwards in your app? Yeah. Do like you have the app on your phone? Yeah. No, I, I don't, I'm going to have to call. Just you know, help, see if they can help troubleshoot why I'm not. Get the emails, I'm just not on the phone. Yeah. Interesting. So on VT Alert. Yeah. So. Amy, yeah, I wanted to pass it. Yeah, Amy's ordered up. Um, Some. Any of these? I don't remember. A, a good 200? handful of. Yeah, 200. 200, so. I think it was. And that's a sign-up thing um, to hand out to people to just say, hey, sign up for VT Alert. And pass up. That just came out as an insert yep. in yep. something. What was it? I think in the world. In the world? Yeah. Oh, did it? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, good. Yeah, they had those. Maybe nice. Yeah, we've got an ag, ag, yeah. ag review. Okay. Ag I don't know. Cause I don't okay, good. World. That's that's really good. So that's mm -hmm. that's being ordered up for... Yeah. The, for a ride, you can yeah. pass along. Okay. And then this booklet, um, Family Emergency Preparation, is there's some of those coming in as well, which is pretty interesting. So you guys have seen this? Well, we have this by, so the old town hall, like an opening potluck dinner is June 8th. And that's Amy. Yeah, you got that. that information. Um, it's pretty cool to hand them out. So going to that 
Um, I talked to Curtis. She has resigned. Yep. So originally she and I were going to sit down and look at I the thing and yeah. which ones. Well, now the, the food shelf has asked if they could, you know, hook up with some of the events as well. The so, food shelf. Nice. Um, I, ha I have to send her, uh, Curtis an email, just a quick blurb, so that she can pass it on to the appropriate person and we're not, you know, not conflict with what they're doing. Okay. Okay. I did speak so. to John Benhammer yeah. on, on this flood resilience. It's not until 7 p.m. on the 20th. Um, he said he's going to talk to the speaker and maybe even turn the mic over to us. Oh, we um, get our song and dance ready. <laughs> He's writing the song. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, but we can, he said he has no problem with us being there. Um, and that's June, June 20th. 20th. That's Flight the one. Resilience. Okay. Yeah. 7 p.m. So oh. when, when's that Shing thing? I don't know what day it is. June 20th. I kind of thought it kind of went hand in foot, you know, about... <laughs> Where's the calendar? June 20th is a Thursday. What's the location? Old Town Hall. Okay. So, yeah, if, you know, if we can get people to... By then, uh, we should have... Th those will be in. We should have some flyers. What time is it? Seven. We should have a sign-up. Um, mm hmm So that we... People can go attend. Mm-hmm. Um, so what is it, a dinner? So is it a couple of no, dinner? it's a presentation. Um, Would you like to go make a presentation? The <laughs> Conservation Commission is, is sponsoring this on flood resilience. I don't know who's actually speaking. I don't know if it's Two Rivers or... Um, that he, he didn't tell me. But he's supposed to get back to me and let me know... Um, how the speaker feels about it. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, I just kind of thought that that would be a good thing to try to, yeah. yeah. And you're following, you're like going back to Curtis about the potluck one. No, no, I am going to send her an email um, tomorrow, mm -hmm. and she is going to pass it. Dan oh, O'Brien is the one who right. who now is president. Yeah. So. Um, but she's not sure he, he's the appropriate person. She's going to make sure it goes to the right person. Yeah. There's and, not that many people. And what is the group? I know. This I is would, the Brookfield Community Partnership, I, so it's the group that oversees the, the old town hall. Um, functioning of the old town hall. And has well, they actually it own it, right? They do own it. Yes. Yeah. And, and they've they, been at it for 22 years. That's amazing. They're and actually they going for a, a grant that... Um, where they can update the building to have heat and, you know, have all the floors open. Yeah, it's called the Village Trust Initiative, mm -hmm. and um, it has the potential for um, quite a bit of money coming into communities of under 2,000, which, yay, we yeah. totally qualify. We should get a generator. Um, yes, yeah. that's a good idea. And um, 88 bathroom. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Put that put that right in and say we want to use it as a shelter. Oh yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, yeah, because that that's, that's the time to, to strike. Yeah, um, is you go you go in. I think it's Sunny who you want to talk to in the state of Vermont, um, and she deals with a lot of the grants, or I think generators and whatnot. Right? And in what um, agency is she? Emergency management. Is she oh, okay. She's an emergency. But, um, yeah. Yeah. But, so so you should definitely. Go that route and mm -hmm. say, this is, we want to make this a shelter, mm -hmm. an emergency shelter. Yeah. And we need a generator, we need an ADA bathroom, we mm -hmm. need a shower. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can say... And, and there is a kitchen already. Right, yeah. and then an up-to-date yeah. kitchen. Yeah, yeah. oh, it's up-to-date. It's yeah. it's a nice kitchen. Yeah. And then have That's that good. all inspected by the, the food. Yeah, Does Board of have, Health. Yeah. Board of Health people. So it's very competitive, of course, and you can get... 
um, the max is 450000 which is a good chunk. Good chunk. You've been involved with the old town home, haven't you, Ron? Yeah, yeah for, for 22 bit. years. Yeah, like I was going to say 22 years. It's yeah. a couple years. Months. Yeah. So I was there when we were throwing the stuff out the upstairs windows into the dumpsters yeah. down below. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, this is a just, it's just a, a pot of money that if we could, I think Brookfield is very well positioned to be of interest because so much work has been put into that building and because it is has always been identified as a community building mm -hmm. resource and that's what they're looking for. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. We have an interview with them uh, Monday, I think. And I say we because they <laughs> I saw I got a notice about this just from a million different lists that I'm on and I sent it to Shelby because Gerard because I just didn't know who was really running the board anymore and she said oh yeah they're looking for a committee member and I went oh okay so anyway I that's became it. a committee member on it which is great fantastic. but that's how I um, have just <laughs> ended up knowing a lot more but the amount of time and money and everything that the, your, the whole group has put in for so long has made a big difference however if you go up to the second and third floor, it's a, it's a place that needs serious work. Yeah. 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 And it needs to be done soon ish. What, what sort of serious work are you talking about? Mm -hmm. What sort of serious work are you talking about? Well, first up there, what well, you need basic just cleaning. Mm -hmm. Just, it's just, like it was structurally so, itself. Well, it's, there, there's a question of whether they shouldn't need a roof because. You guys did a the whole roof was done. Never roof, but yeah. you look up there and it's just. Bottom line is those two floors could be used for something really important for the community. Whatever it is, I don't know what it is. That's part of the talking mm -hmm. process, mm -hmm. but we regardless need to get it cleaned out. But the more important thing, pro or as important, is to get heating in there for mm -hmm. year round because right mm -hmm. now it's only a June to October. Um, we had general place. elections in there the one year. And Burr. Oh yeah, it was. It was really, I never took my coat off. Yeah, it was yeah. freezing in there. So getting heat, yeah. starting. You know, who knows? There's so many interesting things that could be done with the space. Is really nice. Yeah. Than what's been done with it, and the second through floor, a lot of room up there. So we'll see. We'll Does it need parking improvements? Is, is there? That, that's parking? Taking, you know, <laughs> Yes, let's have a parking garage. Can, wait, wait, wait. Though, Can we not yeah. talk about parking tonight? Well, you know, at the shelter, it could become an issue. Well, the parking in downtown here is right. just. There's no tricky. parking in downtown. Yeah, that's the problem. Say, so what if you put the town offices in your building and then leveled this as a parking lot? The town offices were in there. That's what. It's, oh, that's really? originally yeah. 150, 175 years ago. Oh. Um, <laughs> actually, it started as a tenement house for workers in all the mills uh -huh. up and down the river here. And the guy who started it was very well known, very rich, ran a big trading company out of Brookfield, and he died before it was done. And then it was taken over by like the library, which was not like that library, but it was a library by the town clerk, by the post office, and then the Masons came in and put a lot of work in it and took it over. Wow. So it has a very interesting and long history. So, anyway, that's that. Um, so but thank you for like making that list for me in my yeah. head because that needs to get in the conversation. Yeah, because it, it's so easy right now. There's a lot of monies that float around <clears throat> yeah. that might apply yeah. into that. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, right. The school district has has used those monies mm -hmm. um, for for different aspects of. Yeah their buildings yeah. and a lot of people do it if, if it's a town building yeah you yeah. know a lot of times if it meets the criteria yeah. and the building plans are, are there yeah um you can get something good Excellent. um that's amazing so in, in regards to parking john benson has said something about this being public parking i don't believe we own this place Who's uh, we he, in this he, sentence? Who's we? The town. The town owns, you don't believe they own this place? Who owns? University of Vermont. Because what? of the library, you mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. What? Really? So, um, really? and as my husband just discovered that we've actually extended the parking lot onto somebody else's property. Good, because I was considering the idea of extending it a lot. 
Maybe they'd be okay. Yeah. With that. Okay. <laughs> Do we know who it is? No, I don't even know. <laughs> what? So, so, from my understanding, is that it? N- no, no, that's not the it. University of Vermont um, has let the the library be here, and we're here at the grace of the library. Well, isn't that just a tangled web? Um, Sounds. Like a good I don't, relationship if you're all friends. I don't think that has changed. Wow. I'm trying to find where we are here. We should find out. Hey, Jack. Well, that's a yeah, well, Laura would for sure know. Can you come find us? Laura. Oh, 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 Isn't that through the, uh, the oh, Ann or Clark thing, Amy? Yeah, it doesn't want to be recorded. Isn't that through the Ann or Clark? The, um, I don't know. So, well, well, she's... I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. I, I'm thinking that's... Isn't that the name? And the court left this building to the library. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. She left this building. Anna Clark Jones or something oh, was her name? from a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And as long as it stayed a library, oh. the town could have it. Oh. But if that... Oh, well, this is part of the agreement. Yeah. Well, I, I believe so, yeah. That story's been We're talking on the way back. Yeah, yeah. 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 then it went back to Because I'm, don't Louisiana they have the parcel here? No, you want parcel here. Yeah, I don't know she was a professor oh, there. Oh, she was such but, an interesting lady. Yeah. So, but, so, okay, that's... So back, back to um, shelter stuff. <laughs> um, so we're passing passing around that for what, what people no, should sort of have on hand. Back, can, can um, in, in, their, in their houses, just in case something happens that they have to hunker in for, for a few days. And then, obviously, using a shelter as a place to go if you're unprepared, um, or if your your home gets you know demolished because of whatever reason. That booklet will help you know spark the thought process of what people should probably have. Um, the shelter group should probably come up with a a easy list, you know, sort of a default kind of list, you know, like a case of a bottled water, 24 mm. pack, um, food that is non-perishable and easy to heat, and how do you heat that safely, um, you know, come up with some ideas that, that would work for that, you know, generators, you know, just a, a, a short list of, hey, you should have this in your house definitely by fall time into springtime, just in case something happens. And then having, you know, the ability to open a shelter and have volunteers, you know, man that shelter. So that's, you know, that would probably be a good thing for the shelter group to, to look into. Yeah. You know, building, you know, a, a short list of, mm-hmm. hey, you should have this. You know, especially if we're going to do that mock shelter. Is there one in there? I believe there, there is. It, is. How long is it? I'm sorry. I'll just look when I get it. Yeah. Um, you know, and medication. People should have medication when they show up to a shelter. Mm-hmm. You know, and this this should be all sort of planted in everybody's head. You know, no matter who they are, where they are, what town, state. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's sort of a, a, a FEMA kind of thing. You know, you should be prepared and ready this? to go. I uh, Sydney from uh, Two Rivers is sending them to Amy. Oh, so, so, so we're going to get those. That, that, that one i got to return back to my wife. <laughs> she'll probably get ticked off if I <clears throat> gave it away. <laughs> I mean, I have mine, but it's buried. I've got so much information. It's mine. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, the, the other thing I wanted to talk about tonight was, like, this mock yeah. thing that we're going to do. And what what's the scenario? Who's, and where are we doing it with others? So, so what I was thinking, somebody threw out some ideas or whatever, I mean, you're, you're the one running it, um, is A, reach out to Bob and, and pin down a time that we could use that just, gymnasium just, yeah. in that hallway mm-hmm. um, before cleaning or after cleaning, you know, the, the, the summer cleaning that they do. Or is it not on the table kind of thing? Yeah, he hasn't returned my call yet, so. Okay. And if, if we can pin down a date on that, then work with um, Wheatley and see if he can't get a fire truck up there. Okay. okay. You know, and, and see, you know, and then reach out to the ambulance company right. yeah, and see if we can't get an ambulance up there. 
you know, just to have something yeah. fun for the kids to sort sure. of look at and, and, and whatever. And bring it into, hey, this is how the shelter, this is where the shelter will be. You know, set up some mock stuff mm -hmm. of, of, you know, snacks and whatever. Are you talking um, about like as, like a... An activity like a day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, like a, Where you a, invite a time. Time. people and yeah. kids. Yeah. Okay. But okay. Between this hour and this hour, mm -hmm. and you know, because fire trucks usually get kids interested and get people oh, interested. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And ambulances <laughs> as well as is that, and just say, hey, this is so, and then start promoting the whole shelter aspect. Well, as of right now, they have all three ambulances in service. Okay. Oh, so um, I would I would look at towards the end of the summer because to do anything it takes time. Yes, you know, you, know. you, you got to get your ducks in a row. You can't say, "Hey, next weekend we're doing it." Oh no, well, of course not. You you want to promote this through Facebook. You want to promote mm -hmm. this through um, front page forum. Mm -hmm. You want information here at the Bars. town hall, um, and you want information getting fed out there so you have a good turnover. Because the more people, the more excitement. And I, did they do something down here at the park at one point? That's where I thought couple, we were going to do it. A couple it was years down ago. At the park. But didn't they do something here, a, a function? I don't know. Because I remember volunteering mm -hmm. here for something, and I don't remember what it was a few years back. The fishing derby. It wasn't the fishing derby. <laughs> 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 but they had a little booth set up, and hmm. I forget who was there. I'd have to scroll it wasn't my... the opening of the bridge that you're thinking of. It Probably. could have been. Yeah, maybe it was. That was the last big event I can. Uh, Scott I was remember. there. I remember talking to him. Oh, well, he <laughs> would, he, that was probably. Well, what if it was, was when this bridge was first designed and opened. Yeah. Yeah, even Bill Boniac was there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so was good. the uh, Secretary of Transportation at the time, Sue Mintz. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't. Re Call exactly what was happening. I just remember being yeah, there, there. Was, there was a lot of people. Yeah, a muck kind of thing. And yeah, that's why I thought if we did it here. But we yeah we could do it here. But I would try an actual location, a building, okay. mm -hmm. and if that falls through, okay. Um, and I would talk to the school board as well. Oh yeah. Um, because they have some weight. <laughs> Yeah, so I, you're not just dealing with some there, uh, facilities. There are no cots there, right? Um, there there are no cots. Good, yeah. I mean, that would be something if you could reach out to people that you know, hey, you got a cot that you can lend. Mm -hmm. Just as oh, a cot. Hot. 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 Oh, God. No. <laughs> or even a lounge chair or something. Well, something that's going to be what's going to be there. Or just get like a hold a of. Room or mm -hmm. get a hold of the Red Cross and see if you can't get. Yeah. Some used mm -hmm. cots mm -hmm. for a display. Okay. Because they, they have them all packaged up, and then they get them returned as well. Mm -hmm. So the American Red Cross would be a, a good reach-out area. And you will want to get a hold of Lindsay. Lindsay, okay. Yeah, is our contact person. I, I'll get you that, her phone number. Oh, awesome. It makes sense to try to do that at the location where the shelter would be anyway. Just right. for muscle memory and... Yeah. Just familiarization. And that would be so. Yeah. Right, and it does make sense, but the school's not really officially a shelter yet. Right, so that's why I was trying to contact Bob um, to see what the holdup is. Um, they do not have a shower, but from what I read, and maybe I'm reading yeah. it differently, the shower is optimal, so that doesn't mean it's required. Right. You're probably right. Yeah. A lot of information yeah. gets thrown in my head. <laughs> yeah, so that's different. that's the way I took it yeah. anyway. So um, I don't know. Yeah, the um, application is not the same as reading the guidelines. Yeah. Right. What's the holdup in terms of having the school designated as a shelter? What's that's that's what it is. Talk to Bob and find okay, so mysterious. there's an application process mm -hmm. that needs right. to happen, and we do have a copy of an application. From somewhere else, yeah. um, but the school itself is not applied to be a shelter. Mm -hmm. So we have to contact the superintendent of the school and ask if there's basically a restart reason or restart it. Okay. So the because Lane is gone, right? Lane okay. no one's right. And there's a new superintendent. Right. So the school has to apply to 
Red Cross. Emergency Manager. No, Red Cross. Red Cross, yeah. Red to Cross. be a shelter. Okay. So, but they don't have to. It can be... The, okay, so let's back up. So the, the goal here with this shelter group is not to open a shelter and hold the shelter. No. We, we want to get rid of it like a hot potato. Mm -hmm. the Red we want to open over. it. We start filling it up. We turn it over to the Red Cross mm -hmm. and let them deal with it. Mm -hmm. The Red Cross needs this, these things filled out mm -hmm. so they right. can legally mm -hmm. take it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now, without that information, without that, those forms filled out, the Red Cross can, can feed things into it mm -hmm. kind of thing. And the MRC can put people in the state mm -hmm. for volunteers mm -hmm. for our shelter. Mm -hmm. But it's now a private shelter. Mm -hmm. And we don't want it to be a private mm -hmm. shelter. We want to turn it over to the authorities, mm -hmm. you know, and let them do it. Because that, then that means if we say mm -hmm. we're going to open Monday at 5 o'clock and our closing date is Friday at 2 o'clock, mm -hmm. now we have to man it. Now, when you say turn it over to the authorities, what, who are the authorities? Meaning the Red Cross. Red Cross. Oh, okay, those authorities, okay. Yeah, because right. they're experts. So yeah, the right. school can be a shelter regardless. Regardless. Because aren't, as long as the school board or administrators agree? Correct. And if there's an emergency opening, then you would contact them? Who would contact them? The EMD would, yes. You would? Yeah. Okay. Whoever's sitting EMD. But the supplies wouldn't come from the Red Cross. Right. We would have to have our own supplies. In the beginning, yeah. we would need something. That's mm -hmm. why I put together that mm -hmm. kit of food, snack, water right. for the first oomph. Mm -hmm. The Red Cross can be there allegedly in 24 hours. Right. With their equipment, even with their mm -hmm. stuff. private shelter. Right. That's what I wanted to so, so then really... So they would send us supplies. They would send us cots and stuff like that. The food, we'll have to figure out. Okay. So we want to we want to get rid of it, the liability aspect, as quick as possible. Because instead of it being under the school insurance, now it's under the Red Cross insurance. Mm -hmm. So it's their everything's their problem. So do we just need the permission of the school board to? We need them take to the fill out the paperwork and take care of that part. Even if it's a private shelter. Um, I would prefer that it not is not disagreeing. A I just want to make sure. Yeah. Okay. No, if if it's a private shelter, no, nothing's nothing's needed. Okay. But then it's by by their really nilly yeah kind of thing yeah i mean bob i just wondered known. if we had a conversation about that yet yeah okay. i have with bob, with bob. okay and, yeah. and what's bob's role he's um facility yeah he's supervisor a... manager yeah, okay him and wes gibbs are co yeah so he's he's in randolph now right yeah is there um, a way to find out the red cross's um actual Capacity to respond to an emergency. So if it's yeah, it's right on their it's right on their website. So they they <coughs> so like if it's a local emergency, uh, you know their response time would probably be reduced. But if it's statewide, right. So during during the flooding last year, mm -hmm. it took uh, Randolph a couple of days to get caught. But that, that was because of Barry and right, Mont but Hill. Barry and everybody else was open. Okay. You know, so they yeah. the cots actually came from Springfield, Massachusetts. But it would be the same in a big emergency. Barry right. would still open. It'd still be two days. Correct. And that was the worst case scenario for the state, two days? It seemed to be, yeah. Okay. I mean, I didn't dive into it. I just was monitoring what was happening. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I didn't see a need to, to open. I didn't see the need to open a shelter. Right. Kevin and I spoke oh, about it, and we nice. decided to keep our, our our hands in the pot for VTC until the following day, and then we both agreed yeah, we don't need it, so we pulled our hands out of the pot. You know, it, it kind of brings up some interesting questions in my mind because what I saw happening in Barry, um, where I you know spent a couple weeks mm -hmm. volunteering, is. Uh, there's a whole lot of stuff that people need um, that is not technically a shelter. Um, they might go into a shelter for a couple right. of days, but then they don't have a home. They don't have any food. And so the churches in Barrie, for, 
for example, were the those were the entities that stepped up. All the churches just had this amazing full court press for weeks, sending out hundreds and hundreds of meals every day to right. people, having huge clothing drives. But that was very clear, like, there's nobody else doing that kind of stuff. So They were, the Red Cross yeah. was. I, 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 was, might have been, but I, I, I was yeah. I was actually volunteering mm-hmm. my wife okay, and so I the both up there. Then was happening. So at the shelter mm-hmm. for Barry, there was a concession line that you could drive through. Was that the at the auditorium? At the auditorium. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, the Red Cross was there and a, and a few other organizations and bottled water, snacks, um, cleanup kits. Um, what else was being given? different food items. I think there was a hot food truck that came in mm-hmm. during a certain time mm-hmm. that you could get a hot hot meal. Mm-hmm. All of that was being handed out and for quite some time they were doing yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, I, it, it struck me um, that there's never too much. <laughs> you know, there's the church I was working with, just because I happened to run, run into them, they put out 10,000 meals yeah. in a week. Right. And you know, and they, I delivered them to right. people, and people needed them. So I just, I'm just saying this because I'm thinking like, okay, so we get our little shelter done, and then we hand it off to the Red Cross. But then, as a community, what do we have to offer? It's not technically your job as, as emergency as, management. No, it's but, not. Um, as as a community, want you want to reach out to. We're not a big enough community to have those resources. Yeah, church. Um, yeah. Right. But the the amount of supplies that are there, like the church, churches in Barrie that were giving out food, if they had a certified kitchen mm-hmm. yeah. and they they were part of, you know, feeding people and whatever, they had the opportunity to reach out to the USDA and get all that money replaced. And they had Cabot and right. they had yeah. you know, oh, really? endless contributions from yeah. Bigger and Shaw's and Hannaford's and it, right. it was a massive it, food. It, it was machine. those those are pop ups. Yeah, those are pop ups. Yeah, pop-ups. they only they're there for like six weeks. Yeah, and eight weeks. Yeah, but just to think of for right. once again, it's I know technically not emergency shelter, but as sort of the representatives of at this moment of the community to think about emergency stuff. Right. Be nice if we just sort of said and for you know be appreciative of churches, you know, understanding what Well, that's what where you that's, that's where you build a relationship yeah. with that church, that yeah. con- congregation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so should we connect with somebody to ask about should we connect with local churches, I guess is what I asking. I think at some point it, it would be a good idea to like first idea. of all that's yeah. a really good way of getting the word out of right. the emergency shelter. Right. What do we have? We have so. East where yeah we, have e- yeah, we have East Brookfield. East Brookfield Church. Yeah. Um, and the Pine one right Village. here. Mm-hmm. What's the Pine Village one? Uh, United, is it United something? Yeah. What's their, do, does anybody know their um, their flock? How, how many people attend that church? No. no but, but they have a lot of activities. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Breakfast so. every Saturday. See, that, that would be right a here? good place yeah. to okay. get those out. Yep. Yeah. You know, a Sunday morning. You know, talk to the pastor and say, hey, um, no, we, we would like to see if you can hand these out like during your service. Some sort of Presbyterian. Now, I know I'm that the pastor in East Brookfield um, is, uh, is from East Brookfield is a um, non-denomination. the mm-hmm. Green Mountain mm-hmm. Gospel in Randolph. So he's a pretty popular pastor, from oh, really? I understand. Ron Rilling? Yes. Yeah. 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 So. He used to live in Brookfield, you know, where County Carroll lives. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, back in the late 60s, early 70s. Yeah. There's a church in West Brookfield also. No, which, it's a community well, center. It's, it's not a church. There's a community center in West Brookfield also. <laughs> uh, but just, I mention that because West Brookfield is, as you know, because you live there, 100 miles away when it gets to functioning as a community meaning it's a, it's a far piece from here and it would be nice to have a center of you know resources there too well they, I mean they have a group 
that yeah. I mean we're part of it. Okay. Um, you know that they initiate little events and stuff like that during yeah. the summer. Nothing major. Yeah. So if there was a need for continuing food resources or a mm -hmm. kitchen, okay. no, because their community have... center is no heat. Uh, it's, a, it's a wood stove, and it, no, there's n there's really no parking there. Okay. Uh, so for, for food, for food, <laughs> <the club>. for, <laughs> food <laughs> yeah. for food wise, Bob has already said in a state of emergency, everything's meeting that criteria, mm -hmm. that he will get food from the high school up to Brookfield. You know. Oh, okay. And they they're already fully aware of the USDA. That whatever yeah. they they hand over, they're gonna From log the in. in yeah, okay. they're gonna log in as being handed out as food. So mm -hmm. they're gonna get those those dollars back. They know that. The food shelf here in Randolph. Rebecca is the head board person. I've had multiple conversations. She is okay with our, us raiding their store and and taking stuff, but everything has to be logged yeah. so she can get her money back. Right. Okay. So, and there's, and I've got a list of other food banks around here that we could always reach out to if we needed food. And this is only if there's a declared disaster. State of emergency. State of emergency. It has to be a state of emergency. So, we need to get all this information together in one yeah. area that and we one, can all access. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, I agree. That's yeah. me. I know. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's... It's not that. It's just you know. It's, not, it's just all over. Now, I, I don't know. know if Susie did anything. No, she didn't. I, no, so I did make that page for Google Groups, and then I made the three of us owners mm -hmm. because I my impression was that she was going to yeah. do things because she was very interested in making the page itself. Mm -hmm. But then she asked me to add members, so I don't know that she. Add numbers. Add numbers. Oh, add members. members. Oh, yeah. I started to do that and then I stopped Did because you? I didn't know if she had already. I mean, I could do she that. She had not. Um. Hmm. Okay. So, um, to make it work, we all have to have Gmail accounts. So. I got Yahoo. Is that the same thing? Well, no, you didn't have to. You need a Gmail, Gmail account. account. Or I can just look and try to do. An independent web page, I guess. It wouldn't be. Would that have limited functionality though? So Probably. you wouldn't have the, like the Google Sheets and the Google Docs and no. all the features. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're better off using yeah. features of Google. Yes. Okay. Is it? It's all free, right? Yeah, yeah. it's all free. I think so. Um, yeah. so that makes it easy. Yeah. yeah. And I, I shared we I shared a file. I shared a file with my own Yahoo account. I tr I wanted to try it out. So, did that work? I, I believe so. Okay. Um, Have the members been added yet, or is it no? Is it just, just three okay. of us. Because so I um, started the page, and I thought that Susie. Yeah, I thought she was going to look at it, and um, was very interested in yeah, taking it over. It. Um, so. I Yeah, I had a, a, a conversation with her, and um, so I gave her the option, you know, look at what she had done already, or, you know, she didn't really like the setup of it, and she wanted to do something else, to so go ahead and do that something else. But I haven't heard anything back from her, so I'll probably, I'll give her a call. We'll just do it. I, I think my we'll challenge is when I, when I leave the meeting, I wonder, is there something I could be doing between meetings? And mm -hmm. uh, if there's a place I could go to see a... You know, a running things. list of deliverables. Well, that that's kind of what yeah. what we would like to do. That's you know, um, so okay. yeah, we have like to find out what the events are that we could actually go to. Um, you know, I'll go ahead and I'll email Curtis, and then she'll give us the appropriate person. Um, I don't know if you want to maybe take over that. That's fine with me, just to see know what dates would be good um, for them to let us 
either sit in the back of the room or outside? Sure, I can help with that. Okay. Yeah, okay. if we put that into the into the mm -hmm. dock that we're sharing, and um, and then I can add information into it. Sure. So like an action so item, like. Yeah. Amy obviously is a good sort, but if you need help, like who to contact, who's on that board, just yeah. email oh, yeah. me. Okay, let's I'm let's like, back up a little bit, though. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's back up a little bit. We really need a viable mission statement yeah. um, before Absolutely. doing any of that, because everybody needs to be on the same page and the same understanding. Right. Put it on the so, to-do list. So if um, <laughs> Pastor Joe's over there, and I'm talking to Pastor Joe about this because I just met him. Hey, cool. I'll talk to him. And I start talking to him. And then you show up at church and say, yeah, I don't know. And you start talking to him, which yeah. is fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're saying something that's slightly different than he's going to, Pastor Joe's going to say, so is this the same thing? It, it, you'll confuse mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. So if both of us are rattling pretty much the same thing off, yeah. our mission statement in the way we're doing things, sort of like uh, telemarketers, you know, they have a spiel. We want that. What? We oh, want to be, we want to duplicate. Yeah. In this, I, um, that sounds, that sounds easy. Right? Yeah. We're all so, saying the same thing. Rich, yeah. in this minutes from last meeting, yes. and you, there is a mission statement draft. It looks like that yeah. got put. Is there? It's it's being worked on. By. Whom? By the manager. The who's the manager? <laughs> Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm happy to take the mission statement and make a run at it. I hate well, mission statements, but I will be happy to. Should we? Well, I, I would. I would like to say yes, mm -hmm. and I assign? thank you very much Good. for offering. Wrong, it. How, however, yeah. however, mm -hmm. Amy mm -hmm. and Anne have been at every meeting. Okay. You and they they know curious. the con you know what I mean. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we've no, been meeting separately. As I'm well. I'm sure. What you come up with would be good, so good, but you'd be spinning possibly your wheels the wrong way. Oh, and, okay, you, and the other thing too is that we're not we're not just an emergency shelter because when you when you put emergency shelter, everything comes up homeless, and that's not what we are. So we're an emergency disaster shelter. See, we're learning. So, Ooh, um, like this man. one's this one says. Has anybody in Brookfield, may, may I ask? Had to go to a shelter in any of these. Do you know of anyone that's? I no, but they don't. I don't. I've been the EMD in this town, I believe, for four or maybe five years, and there has never been any talk of needing one. The reason that it came about that we should probably have one is what came out March of 2023 of where the um, tabletop exercise oh, were from about me? us, southbound, <laughs> New Hampshire, Vermont, you Massachusetts, got wiped out because of an ice storm. All the power was out for many days. Mm -hmm. That's what triggered it. Okay. The state, I believe, came up with that tabletop exercise because it is happening all, all over the country. Areas that never got wiped out are getting wiped out. Green Mountain Power has gone on a campaign of putting um, in Randolph, in the town of Randolph, and they, they're, they're saying by 2025 the, yeah, that the all their, their wires, all their cable lines will be reinforced with cable. So a tree could literally fall on it and bounce. Oh, I heard, yeah, I okay. heard about that. Okay, yeah. that is what they're working on right now, but it's not there yet. And that's but, only Green Mountain Power. But yeah, so Green Mountain Power is Green Mountain Power. Tell However, that's not the only power company that's being used. This one right here? Here, yeah. we've got is that, two. Is that the one that you brought up when we were talking like about it? I don't know, but I kind of like it. So the I'm thought process of again. having that, but that out, uh, a group that can get together um, and open well, they up a shelter vision and, goals and, and yeah. serve the community, but, that's why that came about. Uh, yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. But in the last four or five years, I have never heard of anybody in the room. When Randolph has opened up the fire department, they've had one person maybe 
Well, yeah, show you up. see on the news. I mean, some of the places say, you know, I mean, Irene, nobody showed up or one. Yeah. yeah, Irene. I mean, I guess if one person shows up, it's important for that yeah. one person. Yeah. Right. right. So, right. but like I, when when Irene oh, came through, VTC yeah. was very active. I don't I don't know the numbers because I wasn't living here at the time. Oh, so they yeah. And the, the volume of people that come out could have a lot to do with the word of mouth and the advertisement of its, it, mm -hmm. of its existence. Right. No one, so, yeah, right. no one there will be something there now. Like we don't have to hunker down and suffer. There's a place we can go. Right. Just knowing that might, yeah. you know, drive more people. Right. Yeah. And the, the idea of the whole shelter is not during the incident. It's after the incident. Yeah. What about the Red Cross? Because if we're getting an ice storm on Monday into Tuesday night, you can't really open anything up until Wednesday hmm. after it's it's passable right. kind of thing. But your power is going to be out. You're going to be in the dark. But Isn't we don't want you either. driving, trying to get to a shelter during the incident kind of thing. So that's yeah, all part of it. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, during that storm, I think it took them a couple of days just to clear the roads. The, uh, that's the one I was telling you about when so. the power was out for a week. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. July storm we had, or someplace else you were? Yeah. I think that was, uh, what did you say, was was it March? No, the, the exercise. Oh, that the was tabletop the was, was developed in March. There was, a, there was about a week-long power outage that right. we had, at least, at least down on Route 14. Yes, so that was yeah. the flood. Right? Was it it might have been related to the flood. Yeah. I get them mixed up. Yeah, so we, lose, we lose power like every other I know. <laughs> yeah, I just lose but down. see, on, on that, do you have a generator? I do. Okay. Yeah. See, that's that's the thing. Is you know you lose power. Right. So you have a generator. Mm -hmm. um, somebody with lesser means will figure it out and get a generator somehow. Yeah. You know. Um, or go to the And the same thing with bad air. Yeah. I have somebody in my house that's on oxygen or, or, or whatever, I know this could happen, so I have provisions. So there's there's self-responsibility. Oh, sure. Most definitely. Uh, he knows he loses power. He has a generator. I have a generator, and I've used it, I think, six, maybe six hours, mm -hmm. and that's it. Because the Randolph Village doesn't really go out. But I have one, mm -hmm. because... It fell on my lap for, mm -hmm. for inexpensive. Mm -hmm. If you live in certain parts of Brookfield, you <laughs> have the opportunity to use a generator. Quite Frequently. Bad. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. It's your it's second generator. secondary power source. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, you have cans of gas all yeah. lined up. <laughs> well, you're right. That the, the, they're, they're expensive, they and they yeah. can be maintained, and yeah. they, it requires a level of consciousness and thinking about the being prepared that... Right. Where are you really going to put out that amount of money instead of getting whatever it is that you need for that month? Right. So, yeah, not. I think that's where we. It's nice if everyone. It would be really nice if everyone had a generator. It would. Really right. nice. Oh, is it? Um, It'd be nice to no, know where your neighbors are. That have yeah. Too, yeah. Because, yeah. You know, you might not be to the extent where you need a shelter, yeah. but yeah. you might need. A shower. A shower, right. Running water. Oh, no. But we didn't decide on that. It could be right across the street. Right. You know? Yeah. We yeah. discussed yeah. that the yeah. next yeah. meeting. Our neighbors know. Some of our neighbors. Right. Yeah, we told them, you know, yeah. we've got the That's generator. That's the best thing to so, do. You know, yeah. Yeah. You need something? Come on down. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, that's what I have. This is okay. what well, yeah. we originally were looking at going. It's in a minute. It's very I actually printed out the minutes before. Oh, but, um, Ron, that's what I think a really great example of, like, that's an informal thing that's going to be really important, you know, in the bigger picture. It's like, let your neighbors know if you have a... Yeah. Um, or, or walk around the neighborhood when there's no power, and then you'll find out. <laughs> so, well, yeah. you know, there's... I mean, the safety committee has been trying to find a way to know who would need assistance. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How you know. Do you do that? It's a small town. Yeah. The the DPW and the fire department, they know most everybody. The select board, the the clerk, they know a group of people that come in. And it's all word of mouth. It's all yeah. you know, finding out who, who needs who needs help. Well, and getting up. people to sign up for two one one. Right. And calling two one one if they have a problem. 
That's another flyer we should have. I think, yeah, and I agree with that. I, just, I think it would be helpful. Get, get a hold of Sydney about the two one one. I will. Yeah. For people to call their neighbors, and it is for them to call two one one. Yeah, it might be. Churches might be a good resource to get that that yeah. word out. Yeah. Right. So yeah. my my thought with the church churches is befriend the the pastor. First of all, if you're friends with this pastor, you're friends with that pastor, you're friends with the other pastor, mm -hmm. and and you get to to know the person, not buddy buddy, but friends. A, you can say, hey, can you put this two on one thing out? Can you do this? Can you? And, and most pastors. And still incorporate it into the service, right. the announcement. Right. I mean, my, my dad would, without a problem. If, if you had a legit thing mm -hmm. and he didn't know you, fine. You know, he'd put it right right in. Hey, listen, I have blah, 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 come in, and this is what they're doing. You know. Could I. Um, it's just getting past six thirty, and yeah, I need to go. Are there specific other specific action items that other people <coughs> well that you want to help can with? We put something together and then you know send it out, and you can look at it and see, you know, email the list of yep. action items. Well, if we can get it in Google, it would be it. awesome. Yeah. And, and, and if, add and, to it. And, and add to it. it. Yep. So even even if <coughs> so, Amy and send out the thing that we should have in our staple and you know our, our run bag um great perfect and then i think oh geez maybe you should have some cash in there so i add cash and then you add dog food or cat food whatever mm, right. you know a couple of cans of that and then um somebody else adds something that's eh, maybe not applicable you don't have to use that thing mm -hmm. but every little idea even the thing that doesn't really work like oh yeah you should have a stapler in in, in the in the to go bag mm -hmm. well that has nothing to do with anything but that might trigger amy or ann saying oh yeah it has nothing to do with the stapler but this because it yeah. triggered that thought process so all the information that people have even if it's a little silly or not silly is great like med dog food mm -hmm. water um change of clothes I just thought of that one. Tourniquet. Tourniquet. Turn you know, any medical stuff. I mean, I, I run around with medical stuff in my car and truck. Mm -hmm. I have yeah. duplicate so I can pull off the side of the road and start working on somebody if I have to. Oh, that's the other thing. Speaking uh -oh. of which. So <laughs> CPR. Yeah. So, or for, and, and or first aid. So I spoke with Sally Roberts today at White River. Uh, she is going to contact the trainer, one of the trainers that I had for CPR, because um, she has offered to uh, do it pro bono. We would just have to pay White River for um, the card yep. and something else. There the book? A, the book, right. See, I, I would like to, my, mine ends in November. Mm -hmm. But I would definitely go to that and re get recertified. Right. But I already have the book. So, um, the most she's allowed to train at one time is eight. Yep. Uh, she might prefer for newbies, you know, who've never had it, to keep it to six. Right. If it's a mix of people, because she'd be doing it by herself. Right. Whereas um, the other person who said she would do it is now on, she's in clinical, she's. Oh, running full time at White River, and yeah. she's you know in nursing school or paramedic school. Yeah, yeah. You know, so she, her schedule has really increased. Um, but in any case, so you know, trying to find out if anybody even in the community, if we can't get six people, but you said you would research. Yeah, I, I there, would research. There's one right there. Right. Uh -huh. um, with, without without issue. I mean. Yeah. <clears throat> it's, so, it's, it's, I'd, I'd rather have that done so, earlier than, than later. Right. right. And so what what I would do instead of reaching out to the townspeople mm -hmm. is if there's eight spots, mm -hmm. I would put it to the volunteers here first. Right. Second, so let's say we have four people that are going to do it here. Mm -hmm. You have six spots. You have two more spots reach out to the DPW 
ask them to if they want to do it. If they say no, then oh, you, you reach the out. The, the highway department? Highway department. Okay. And do it in <laughs> town. <laughs> Public works. <laughs> yeah. In, in town are, are two firefighters yeah. because yeah. they are the ones sure. that are our, our, our backup. Right. And our, um, the, the Public Works people and the fire department. I know Those the are our backup. Fire backups. department about six months ago, was it? Out of class? Well, maybe somebody might have missed it. So you yeah. reach out to the chief and say, hey, did anybody miss the class? We have two openings. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Joe missed it. Call Joe yeah. and say, Joe, this is when we're doing it. Can you be there? And then at that point, you have. Right. One spot still open, and nobody in the town offices here, mm -hmm. or the fire department, DPW, need it. Then reach out to the person that lives down the road from the school. Yeah. Because we might get them to come in and volunteer. Sure. Right? Mm -hmm. So we keep it concentrated okay. instead of throwing it out to somebody that is, it's, it's like, you know, when, when police departments hire you as a police officer, for $25 an hour, I send you to the police academy, and then you're done with the police academy, and you say, I can make $40 in Hartford. I'm out of here. We have two yeah. constables, too. Now now I just paid, paid your your training, and right. now you're working for Hartford. Great. Thanks a bunch. <laughs> you know, so let's let's. So what I understand. have to do is coordinate it with, um, to get dates, yeah. with the trainer, obviously, and White River, and what kind of training that they're going to be involved with so that we can come up with a, a date. The CPR class is four hours. If we want to do the AED with it, um, I have the paper right there. That's what happens when you move things around. Oh, so she also suggests, because we have Stop the Bleed um, yeah, to kits, do that. that's free, it's online. Um, we could do, uh, I can find out the link, and we can do Stop the Bleed training. Um, so we could do Heart Saver, um, first aid we, only. We could do the CPR and first aid. We could do CPR and AED. So, you know, we have options of what type of training that we would like. See, I like them all of it. Hmm? Yeah, well, CPR, first aid, and AED. A A D. Right, well, mine was just CPR and AED. Okay. Um, because that was <coughs> offered through Bethel University as a free course. Correct. Can we have that. the safety committee put out a notice and ask who might be interested in town? Or? Mm, I think just contacting direct might be better. Okay. You know, like... Um, like Rich said, you know, reaching out obviously to Kevin, to see if anybody there uh, missed the class or needs recertification. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Maybe somebody on the safety committee is interested in becoming an instructor. It's not terribly. We difficult. would have to have all the equipment to go with it, and you do. Oh, you do? it's wicked! It's wicked. Yeah, but they they share. I mean, a lot of places will share the equipment and pass the oh. dummies. See, my my sister was. Certified in, in teaching it. Yep. Because she had to buy all of her stuff. Oh, those stuff are very expensive. Yeah. <laughs> it was a yeah. huge investment. Yeah. I, I happen to be on the White River board, so I kind of have like a contact. <laughs> yeah. It'd just be nice to have somebody in the house. Yeah. Know, but, yeah. Well, I mean, if, are you offering? <laughs> well, I think my I think my work would pay for it. We've got others that are instructors, but I, I don't know about the equipment and using that outside of work. So. Check it out. Well, I mean, I I could ask. we yeah. could see if I mean, yeah. maybe even White River would, you know, as like long it. as you're fully qualified, allow yeah. you to use their. Put it on the to do list. Yeah. yeah. Add it to the doc. Okay. I'll look into it. Yeah. What was that? Something about portable to toilets for the town. Hmm. Was that One River? Oh, yes, it's for the floating bridge. Is it Wind River? Yeah. Stop using Wind River. Why? <laughs> Why? Dimmick's. Huh? Dimmick. Dimmick? Yeah. Who's Dimmick? Who sold the business to Wind River. Dimmick is back in business. Oh, they are? 
Oh yeah, weed. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, well, yeah. I don't do it. He's got he's does. got a fleet of porta potties. Is that a Randolph? Yeah. yeah. Oh, are you saying that is uh, if you think we shouldn't? People should not do business with them for a reason. I'm just no, curious keep, because it's keeping it local, local money. Oh, keep, keep it local. The folks that work for weed do not live here. I mean, uh, for, for for Wind River. Wind River. Mm-hmm. The people that are working for Dimmick mm-hmm. are local people. Mm-hmm. In right. fact, two of them two of them are related to me. <laughs> oh, I see where we're going. <laughs> um, <laughs> can I ask a quick question? When is our next meeting? And because I really have to go. Okay, um, it's it's go it's on. going to be every th- th- last Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Every last Thursday mm-hmm. at five thirty at this location, okay. unless we change. So okay, June, June June twenty seventh. Yeah. Which 